Hello YouTube, it is I, Mr. Know-It-All. I know it all and so should you. And I am so excited right now, it is time to get back to football. That's right ladies and gentlemen, in about two days, um, the, the NFL's regular season will kick off its 2011 season. And, and I call it opening day. It's like Christmas with football. Everybody, everybody looks forward to this day, especially myself and my brother Condor. We, we all love some good old-fashioned football. Um, the opening kickoff game will pit two former Super Bowl champions. In fact, one of them is currently defending that. Um, I'm talking about the New Orleans Saints traveling to Lambeau Field to face defending Super Bowl champion the Green Bay Packers. Last year, they took home the Lombardi Trophy. They took it back to town by defeating the Pittsburgh Steelers. Actually, blowing them out. I could have figured out what the score was, but I didn't have time. So, uh, Bottom line, Packers are defending champions, and yes, the Detroit Lions are ready for them in the upcoming season. They not only, fa they don't, they not only face them on Thanksgiving, they face them twice. That's right, they're our division rival, and we are ready for them. Now I did now I did say um, on my previous video's description um, that I would tell you about the NFL lockout timeline um, that started between around March March 12th and July 25th. Um, so here's the list <clears throat> that I would believe is my way of explaining how this lockout happened. Um, some time ago. I think I believe it was back in 2000. Um, there was a collective bargaining agreement um, that eventually would extend throughout the 2012 season. Uh, unfortunately, the owners um, elected to opt out of that clause, and because of that, that collective bargaining agreement would expire um, after the 20, 2010 season on March 3rd, 2011. But they would not be denied. They would just extend their deadline just to make a deal, just to get a deal going. And unfortunately, it's no work. So March 11th, after failing to to reach a deal, the NFLPA or NFL Players Association, as you, if you will, um, decertifies as a union. And the very next day, the lockout has officially begun due to the expiration of this uh, CBA. And so, because of that, now the players have filed a lawsuit seek against the owners of the NFL seeking an injunction to lift the lockout. Um, negotiations and mediations would begin in front of Judge Sus Susan Nelson or whatever, whoever. Um, and around March 20, April 25th, after a series of negotiations, um, Judge Nelson rules in favor of the players, temporarily lifting the lockout. Not good for the owners, though, is it? Nope. So on April 29th, the owner. So on April 29th, after a couple of days of requesting that the lockout, that the the ruling <clears throat> of the injunction to lift the lockout has request a stay of the ruling of the ruling of Judge Nelson to lift the lockout, and after that request, during the second day of the NFL draft, if you will, um, two of three judges approved, this, approved the request for the stay of the ruling, and the lockout has been reinstated. On May 16th, then, after, on May 16th, the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals issues a permanent stay of the ruling by Judge Nelson. The lockout has been reinstated, lockout is back on, and it's in full effect, pen, and pending the decision, depending the deal to be made, which which means they'll have to negotiate a new CBA, and the owners and players would approve would have to approve that to officially lift that lockout. And what a long journey this is going to be that this was going to be. So um, I did have I did have to point out. On July 8th, somehow, that 
The Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals laid down the surprise ruling that the lockout is legal. And after, after months of significant leverage by the owners and weeks of negotiations, July 21st was the day, was the beginning of the day of the dawning of football as the owners vote 31 to nothing to approve the new collective bargaining agreement with the Oakland Raiders owner Al Davis um, abstaining. Um, the uh, now it's the player now it was the players' turn to approve that uh, new CBA, but it took a couple of days because they weren't because they feel they weren't you know tied to a deadline, so they have to start thinking about it. Like, well, what's going on here? Like, what what are we gonna what what's 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 this new CBA all about? You know, all the uh, you know safety rules. Um, uh, no two a days or no. OTAs, things like that. Um, but it didn't take long because July 25th was the day that football had resurrected. It is. It has been said that the NFLPA has unanimously voted the approval of the deal. So both sides have agreed to approve the new CBA. Football is back, and it would... They, they do have some small issues to clear up before they officially uh, kick off the league year, and of course they do. Um, that the players actually ratify the new CBA around aug sometime in early August, on a Thursday, I would assume, like a August 4th, or August 5th, I think it was, August 5th. 2011, um, the players ratified the new CBA, and and the veteran and the players, some of the players that were not allowed to practice, um, suddenly began practicing, and and the 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 league year has officially kicked off. The very next day, uh, Ro Commissioner Roger Goodell and NFLPA Executive Director Demari Smith officially sign the new CBA. Um, um, in front of the, um, in front of the, in Canton, Ohio, in front of the uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame building, which, which to me was was amazing because they have they have they have fought they have fought they have argued and they have they have negotiated for 132 days. They finally brought back football. And because of that, I think it's time we stop talking about negotiations, corridors, whatever. Just talk about football because it's back, and it's back in a big way. Um, uh, this new CBA would last for 10 years, by the way. 10 years of labor peace, in case you were wondering. Let, now let's just go ahead and talk about the good things about football. You know, every Now every fan um, you know, wears their jerseys or, you know, they, some fans hold parties or kickoff parties. I'm certainly holding off a kickoff party, but it's not a big one. It's probably going to be uh, just just me and my family members, whatever whatever the case may be. Um, but it, but there there are there are good times. Um, there are some people actually throwing a football around, or um, some guys playing flag football. Um, uh, there was this um, Madden NFL 12 Pro Am going on. Between between uh, two teams, um, basically celebrating the uh, release of Madden NFL 12, which was which was supposedly going to be a big hit, in 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 most football fans' eyes. But I I've yet to try it out. Well, I don't know for sure just yet. Um, now, why don't you? Uh, sh I feel I think it is fair that you feel free to share. What you feel are, are are some of the good things you you like about football, maybe some of the things you miss about football, like you know guys guys kicking with their bare feet or um, real grass or or especially coaches wearing suits. That's some of the things they miss. Um, now I now I have been a diehard Detroit Lions fan ever since I was born. Okay, 
they they were my team. Um, dating back to '92, where they were this were very very close, just one game away from making the Super Bowl, but they lost to the Redskins. And I think ever since then they've been they've been into some playoff appearances, but their last playoff appearance was back in 1999, and since then they have been biting the dust. They uh, they have never made a playoff appearance ever since. And I think when the and I think when Matt Millen arrived as the new as the new president of the Detroit Lions, they've become a joke. They they've been the laughing stock of the NFL. They haven't even won. I think the average number of games they have won is probably four, with the most being five. Um, <clears throat> no, seven actually. The surprise was 2007 season when they drafted Calvin Johnson as their number two pick. And surprisingly, they were 7-9, which was the strongest record in that era. The very next year, however, was the worst. They have not won a single NFL regular season game since December 23, 2007, until, until a new regime arrived back in 2009. Matthew Stafford drafted as number one overall pick and leading them to victory for the first time since December 23, 2007, on week week three of the 2009 season, when they beat finally won against the Redskins, 19 to 14. I remember that day uh, that much. <clears throat> and of course, the greatest game that never nobody ever watched or nobody ever been to was, of course, the Browns at the Lions. Um, it was 37 to 31. It came down to one final drive for the Lions. And Detroit scored at the very at the last play of the game with no time left on the clock after a penalty. And the crowd just goes through the roof. And it was after Matthew Stafford injures his shoulder. The guy the guy shows some real grit. And of course the extra point was the win for the win. But I think the real the real igniter that really solidifies uh, their Lions readiness for this season is um, um, the previous season. They were 2-10 and ten coming up to uh, week number 14, and they started their four-game winning streak, finally defeating the Packers, and finally winning on the road against the Buccaneers, and they beat the Dolphins and then the Vikings. So they finished their record 6-10, and ten, third place in the NFC North, and of course, there was there was another guy that was drafted as number two overall pick of the 2010 draft, and Dom Kingsu. And I think this guy is going to be a force of nature. So expect him to play all year long uh, for this season. And of course, Matthew Stafford he has healed his shoulder. He is feeling better. He has felt better than he ever has. And I say that as long as Matthew Stafford stays healthy. The Lions will make their first playoff appearance in 12 years. I'm, act, I'm, I'm actually rooting for them. So I really, really hope that happens. Um, now I think it's time for to make my prediction for opening day. You can feel free to pick your make your predictions. Um, the Saints have made some good offseason moves. Um, the Packers have a lot of players back from injured reserve. So some of the greatest players are back on the lineup after being injured. So I'm gonna. So I think Aaron Rodgers delivers. A, Aaron Aaron Rodgers puts on a show, and the Packers defense delivers. I think defense wins this football game. I'm going with Green Bay Packers to beat the New Orleans Saints on opening day. And now I think it's time to pick your Super Bowl. 46 coming up at Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. I think this is the year that the Detroit Lions, uh, as the final team of the NFC, will make their first Super Bowl appearance in franchise history. Uh, the second team to make that milestone since the Saints back in 2009 season. And they will face the New England Patriots. 
Previously, the Lions blew out the Patriots in preseason week three. I am not even kidding you. I dare you to go back to that game, watch it for yourselves, and see how well they played against the Patriots. But that's just my Super Bowl. What's yours? Go ahead and feel free to share your Super Bowl 46 predictions. Um, oh, and to win it all, you're not going to believe. I say the Detroit Lions win it all. What They win it all. What are your Super Bowl predictions? Pick your two teams to make the Super Bowl this year. Feel free to share. And don't forget, fantasy football is, is just beginning of fantasy football is just a few days away. It's not too late to sign up, so go ahead and sign up for fantasy football. I know I have. I've, I've signed up for fantasy football ever since the uh, 2011, ever since football went back. I actually have signed up for the for fantasy football. I have actually have four different leagues with four different teams uh, ready to go, so I think I'm going to increase my chances of dominating of the leagues and making my punching my ticket to Super Bowl 46 but that's just me so that's it for now I guess I'm giving I just gave you a preview of things to come for the NFL so until then ladies and gentlemen I am Mr. Know-It-All I know it all and so should you and with that pow I'm gone <laughs>